everybody, I'm Kid Catholic. You guys are the Saints in Training. This is Season 4, Episode 3. And guys, if I sound a little weird, I am sick. But um, I'm going to try my best to sound as normal as possible. And today's topic is adoration. So, let's get into it. So, so adoration is extremely important for anybody. Because once a host is consecrated, that is Jesus. So when we're in adoration, and we're looking at Jesus... That is Jesus. That is not a symbol of Jesus. You see, once bread is consecrated and changed into the body of Jesus, there's no going back. You can't unconsecrate it. And so consecrated hosts go into the monstrance. Adoration is when you spend time with Jesus, just with the monstrance, with the tabernacle, with Jesus. Now, adoration is happens in all parishes. Normally it's at least once a day in a week. My parish actually has it 24-7. It's very easy to call your local parish and find out what hours adoration is open and you can just go there and spend time with Jesus and it's especially good if we have any problems going on with our life right now whether you're a kid, whether you're an adult, whether you're having problems with school, whether you're having problems with work, whether you're having problems with family, friends, bullying like I talked about last week. It's great to just go and spend time with Jesus in adoration. Yes, we can pray at home. Yes, we can talk to Jesus at home. But to physically be with him and for us to see him, that is something that is very special. A few years ago, my mom actually, and one of her friends actually started a children's adoration at our parish where they'd have a ton of some kids come and we would sit and just spend an hour with Jesus and we would sing and write coloring sheets and it was so it's good for kids to go also kids can go to adoration it's not just an adult thing yes in most cases you have to be quiet but it's good for kids to spend time with Jesus and for adults this one time I was at a summer program at my church and we were going to adoration and I was thinking like I just want to get to the bouncy house. I don't want to do this adoration. Like, can we please just get this over with? I didn't know how long it was going to be. I can't really remember. This was a few years ago. I think it was maybe a 30-minute adoration, but it was just completely quiet. And I just sat there, and I just closed my eyes, and I knew that I was with Jesus. And that at that moment, I completely fell in love with adoration. It was beautiful. I didn't want to go. I wasn't looking forward to going, but when I went, it was absolutely incredible. So adoration may not seem like something that would be that cool. You just get to sit with a piece of bread, but it is incredible because you don't get to sit with a piece of bread. You get to pray to Jesus because that bread is not bread. It is Jesus, and you get to pray to him and take your struggles to him. And again, some of you might be thinking, can't we just stay at home and pray to him, and can't we just receive him at mass like what's the point of adoration and yes we can and yes we can and all that stuff is great but prayer at home versus adoration is a big difference in my opinion i pray at home i feel warmth i feel like god is with me but when i pray in adoration boy is god with me he is literally right there and it's a one-on-one -on -one moment with jesus because when you're at mass yeah you're one-on-one -on -one with jesus but there's a priest there's a ton of other people around you whereas in adoration there might be some other people around you but it's just you and jesus you just staring at jesus you can spend that time to read the bible to pray the rosary to pray to jesus to just sit there and kneel that's what i like to do to just not think of anything but to just sit there and kneel in adoration I think we can all agree that our goal, our relationship goal with Jesus is for him to be a great friend of ours. It's for Jesus to be our best friend. And so let me put it this way. When you're with your friend and like hanging out with a group of friends is great. Going to a mom's night out, that's great. But when you're one-on-one -on -one with a friend, just maybe going out to lunch with a friend, isn't that great? Or when you're a kid and you're just one-on-one -on -one with your mom and not all your other siblings are around. Or you're just one-on-one -on -one with your dad. Or you're just one-on-one -on -one with your sibling or one-on-one -on -one with your friend. Isn't that great? Like, group time is absolutely incredible. But one-on-one -on -one time is, is really fun to just get to sit and talk one-on-one. -on -one. And if our goal is to become Jesus' best friend, then one-on-one -on -one time with him is important. You see, how I look at it is we can have one-on-one -on -one time with him in our house, sure. But to me, 
one-on-one -on -one time with him in our house is like calling a friend from a different place, picking up the phone and saying, hey, how are you? Calling someone and seeing someone in person are very different things. So one-on-one -on -one time on the phone, that might be fun. But one-on-one -on -one time in person, that's a big difference. And at mass, that's not really one-on-one -on -one time because you have all these other people around you and you're listening to the priest. And so adoration, in my opinion, is like one-on-one -on -one meeting something in person. You have meeting your friend one-on-one -on -one in person. Whereas praying at home is kind of like calling your friend. Uh, then being at mass is hanging out with a group of friends. And so that's why I think adoration is so cool because it's one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus. And if our goal is to build a relationship with Jesus, then that's what we need to do. We need one-on-one -on -one time with him. And I would highly recommend in order to begin building a relationship with Jesus to go to adoration because one-on-one -on -one time with a friend is the best way to get to know each other better. And also something important when we're at adoration is a lot of times when we pray, we like to do all the talking. We like to tell God, can I please have this? And then pray for other people. But what's good, what's great about adoration and what, like, and what I like to spend my adoration time doing is listening. Just sitting still and listening. It wouldn't be a friendship if you were the only one talking and he wasn't talking back because you wouldn't let him. So when we're at adoration, or maybe even when we're praying at home, Let's try to listen. And we won't hear it with our ears. We, won't, we will not hear what God is saying with our ears. We will hear it with our heart. And hearing it with our heart is a true test of faith. And we need to have faith that God will tell us in our heart. So remember, you should go to adoration to build a relationship with Jesus. And not only use that time in adoration to talk, but use that time in adoration to listen with your heart and know that Jesus, the real Jesus, is right there in front of you. So now that the topic is done, do you guys know what it's time for now? It's time for the Saint of the Week. Back at the Saint Sofa, and today's Saint of the Week is Saint Jose Sanchez del Rio. Now his story is pretty incredible because he was born in Mexico in the 20th century so he was not that long ago and when he was in Mexico there was actually a large amount of Christian persecutions going on and the once Catholic Mexico was becoming very very un-Catholic because they were persecuting so many Catholics and a group of Catholics from Mexico actually rose up and created an army to fight against the persecutions and Saint Jose was a very young at the time and wanted to join and obviously the army refused and his mom refused because of his age but he begged and begged and begged and his mom finally let him and the army finally let him but only as a flag bearer he was only going to carry the flag and so they were all on horses including jose he had his own one and during the battle one of the lead generals actually got knocked off of his horse and his horse had run away and so the lead general was now only on his feet and Jose decided that he would lend the lead general his horse, and Jose had to walk the rest of the way. Psh! Imagine that, that big of a sacrifice. When he was walking, the people they were fighting against actually caught him and locked him up. And while he was locked up, he sent his mom a letter telling him that he was locked up, but that he was okay because it was God's will and he was doing what God wanted. Later... Uh, Jose refused to denounce the Lord. He refused to say that Christ was dead. And so they made him take off his shoes and walk barefoot through the streets, through the rocky streets, barefoot. And they made it force him to walk on salt, barefoot. Psh, imagine that much that would hurt, barefoot, walking that much. When he finally got to where he was to die, he, they gave him one last chance. They say, if you said, if you say Christ is dead, you will not die and we'll free you and we'll let you put your shoes back on and you will be healed. He said, no. He didn't denounce Christ. And even through all his suffering, even through walking on those rocky roads barefoot, he still wouldn't renounce Christ. He was martyred there. 
he had an absolutely incredible story. Now, none of us are probably going to be in this situation, especially in the 21st century in the U.S. We probably won't be in the situation to where we're having to walk the rocky roads barefoot. But we will be in situations where our faith will be tested. Our faith will be tested, and whether we know it or not, Christ will be testing us to see if we truly believe in Him and if we would truly denounce Him in order to save ourselves. And so, St. Jose is a great saint to look at, to know that we should not denounce Him. We should not renounce Him. And that we should stay true to Jesus. We need to look at St. Jose to remind ourselves to have faith, to have courage, to have bravery, and to know that Jesus is God. And to do whatever it takes to keep our faith as strong as possible, even if it means death. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like the video. Please click the red subscribe button down below and the bell next to it. That way you get notified when I come out with a new video. Also, guys, don't forget to put in the comments if there's a certain topic or a certain saint that you want to learn about. The, the This week's topic and this week's saint were both you were suggested. So, I will try to get to your topic and get to your saint. Also, guys, I am doing another Q&A very, very soon. I want to do it right now, but we need your guys' questions. So, please ask me questions on my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook website, the link to those four will be in the description and in the comments down below or in the YouTube comments. Um, so don't forget to comment a question, topic suggestion, saint suggestion. Also guys, check out my website, kid-catholic.com. The link to that will be in the description and in the comments. I was Kid Catholic Season 4, Episode 3, and hi, Brielle!